I want to remind us that we try this this week to uh, be a bit more structured and ah. to keep it in an hour. Oh yeah, yeah, we want. To try Let's it. make that <laughs> agreement. Yes, <laughs> we want. It. So I'm very excited about. Yeah, that. and we have to tell each other the story of this year. We said. We So, welcome in the white room. Hello, Mariah. And, Hi, Simon. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> it's one year of this podcast. Did you know that? Oh, my God. You forgot. <laughs> That's both terrifying and fantastic. <laughs> it's one year of this podcast, and this, this means, of course, that it's one year of uh, the uh, coronavirus pandemic. <laughs> yes, um, which we are going to speak about today. Not about the virus, but about all the things that maybe happened along this because it kind of uh, kind of shaped our realities, no? Happened but and didn't happen. Happened and didn't happen. And uh, I'm very glad I did not, uh, to me it did not happen. Uh, but uh, I don't know. Uh, to you also, n not you. You haven't caught uh, it. No? no, no, it did not happen to me either. Actually, I know extremely few people to yeah. whom it actually happened. Yeah, I know some. Uh, one cousin, her husband, and uh, in Argentina, in our family in Argentina, mm. some people and also some severe cases, and uh, then uh, from Dutch friends actually or Dutch colleagues. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's true. I do know a few, but uh, most mostly uh, they sailed through it yeah. happily. I know uh, more and more people who are, vac who are getting vaccinated. That gives me a lot of, <laughs> a lot of hope. Uh, a lot of people that I met, that uh, there is one and there is one and there is one and mm -hmm. they start popping up. And um, yeah, so it's not all. So I have a, I have some new things here. <laughs> this is not for today. It's just for for fun. I have I uh, I managed to to work on my on my sound on my sound routing. Uh, I actually bought a piece of software today. Which enables me. It's uh, because on the Mac it's a little bit difficult to um, root your sounds, but with this software you can kind of root put virtual audio cables from applications to where you want them. Right. Because it's always the problem how to if I speak to you and you hear me, but I cannot stream what I'm listening to on the computer. And so this piece of software helps me helps me with that, and I'm really really glad. <laughs> nice. And um, so this will I th I hope um, uh, get get into the how the podcast works more with with material. Be before it was a little bit difficult to use clips, but now uh, we can just uh, uh, you can send me a link on YouTube or wherever, and we can we can look at that. And yeah, <laughs> so I hope this will make it. Um, Make it better. Mm. I yeah. guess that can go on the positive side of our list of highs and lows <laughs> today. <laughs> yeah. How are you? Don't ask. Let's uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's dive. Are right you not in. okay? I'm I'm very good. I'm 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 okay. Uh, I uh, but I feel I heard that it's difficult. I also happen to excuse myself. No, I say. Sometimes I'm okay. I mean, a part of the pandemic and everything is going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm okay. You know, you understand? I'm not okay because I <laughs> don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'm not affected. <laughs> don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> things, things are not okay. <laughs> yeah. Things. Yeah. This is uh, very, very strange because, uh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> I have so many. We prepared. I I prepared some little things, but I did not have a really a lot of time. So it's all here in the mess of one of two browsers open with ten thousand of tabs, and uh, <laughs> wonderful. Yes. We'll get through it. We'll yeah. get through it step by step. Actually, Simon, ah, I want to remind us. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. But that was oh yeah stuff. <laughs> you want More to remind stuff, us? Please. I want to remind us that we try this this week to uh, be a bit more structured and ah. keep it in an hour. Oh yeah, you yeah, wanted to try. Let's it. make that agreement. <laughs> yes, we wanted. So I'm very excited about. Yeah, that. and we have to tell each other the story of this year. We said we we go and we try to reflect what is the story of this year, and of course, what is the story of of now also. Um, I have to say that um, our bathroom is uh, filled with water because my daughter uh, she um, discovered how to s how to splash with water. How wonderful! <laughs> <laughs> and she 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 didn't stop to splash the water, and the bathroom is now underwater. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> that's very good. She keeps us busy and healthy, and s that's why I'm feeling good. No, I manage. It's it's different because I I feel more and more that I actually have two or three or four hours maybe a day of work mm -hmm. of productive work, <laughs> which is a different feeling. Uh, and I try to how can I how can I organize? This is really different difficult for me. And uh, it was, uh, of course, it was uh, it is difficult to stay at home and to work. This is of course also a big issue. A big topic mm. in the pandemic. All this home, working from home, no? And uh, I remember, Lovely. I remember those also those um, recommendations how to to structure your day and uh, and sometimes it works and sometimes it does not work. But <laughs> yeah, it um, it helps. Yeah. Um, at yeah, the it's a yeah. it's a big a big topic that maybe we can. Uh, put in these because you asked me Simon to make a list of highlights and lowlights and there were was many things that that I found it so difficult to choose in which place <laughs> yeah. should they go yeah at this you know the shifting of home and how how the work uh, what what the place of work was and our relation to space this was definitely one of the things that, that was very defining for me in, in this year, but I could not uh, uh, stick it in just one. They were kind of jumping all over the place and uh, from yeah. positive to negative. To yeah, Let's come, Yeah, we, we, come, we come to that. I want to just ask you, do you have, uh, is there anything new? I heard today that in Amsterdam there is something going on, some... Oh, I forgot what it was actually. Uh, some festival or some th some cultural things with spectators. Is it true? Yeah, it's not in Amsterdam, sadly. It's one of these uh, five events that I was speaking about a, a few weeks earlier mm -hmm. where they are testing um, yeah. what is the effect of, of doing events again. And there was today uh, a pop festival. Yeah. And uh, people were without uh, mouth masks and hugging and dancing. And it was like a throwback to another time. Um, and then they will count and see what happened. <laughs> they did not have any... Ma did they, did, did, did they, they did it without any measures or did they test before? They tested before. They tested. I, actually, I think there's a lot to be said about how this test is is being done this experiment because uh it the results actually they they don't say so much and they're also not taken very seriously by the government so well, uh, yeah this is actually one topic of the because i have i have i have wrote in my uh, notes that we we f yeah it's 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 the same here i mean we this test this rapid test it's very easy to understand, it's just a momentary picture of your infectuosity. <laughs> yeah. So you have a lot of virus. You're a lot. Of, you're very infectious. The test is positive. You have a little bit of virus. You are, you are infected, but you don't infect so much people, and so you it gets negative. So a big percentage of the dangerous people gets selected out, and I really. Now, one year into the pandemic and we now are starting to hear, I already, we went to our aunt and, and could 
buy tests for eight euros in the pharmacy <laughs> each, no? And made the test to, to visit our aunt. She was very happy that we did that. We were very happy. Uh, and um, now we also finally can get one test free every week. Everybody could. and But yeah. you don't know where. And now we discovered one doctor is doing it here. And so we have an appointment now. Every Thursday and Friday we make this free test just to be because Patricia, she is going with our with Ayelet, with our child. She is going to visit some, uh, as we call them, uh, some... Um, um <laughs> second grandmas so <laughs> not real grandmas but uh, she goes there to study and they take care of so older people she visits with our child and we want to yeah not to be a danger to them and so this but it starts so slowly and we could we yeah. could have been and then there is still uh, one colleague that i know or one person that i know he says ah but these chinese tests you cannot you cannot buy ah in parenthesis, no, mm -hmm. anti-Asiatic mm -hmm. racism is very, it's in, it's, <laughs> it's a very another story. But these Chinese tests, you cannot, you should use the tests made by these uh, firm, which is, and uh, so all these, these nitpicking about these, about the details, which of course, yes, but in this situation, I think every test, which is of course evaluated by yeah. the government, is better than no test and you should just and people should get used to it and do it and and, and uh, g uh, yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah what well, what was your you said there was something going on with the tests in in in, in your country that the government does not well take the government them serious does not or or what, uh, what this experiments with the uh, with the uh, events mm -hmm. They are not uh, taken taken seriously in any way. Yeah. Because the 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 result was actually extremely positive. There was very uh, no one actually got infected that they could see. Mm -hmm. Um. But but still, it has it has no. Uh, it's not even really considered. So it feels more like, and it was organized the whole experiment by the events uh, branch. Yeah, and uh, it feels a bit like a carrot. <laughs> you know, here you can do your tests. We actually won't look at it, but uh, it will keep you busy uh, for another three months. And um, yeah, uh, and I think it's a bit the same with this uh, Snell test. That it seems like at least in Holland, like the most front in the consideration is to keep a measure of control. And to make sure that everyone vaccinates, so to keep a bit the, um, um, you know, to keep people on the rules, to keep people uh, happy to oblige and 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 uh, su submit themselves to the rules. So to give this, uh, to advertise or to help these ways that people can have more agency, is actually not. Yes. Um, yes. You don't hear it so much. Yeah, this is uh, exactly. And this is also happening. It's the same happening here. It's all about who has the responsibility, no? Or the how do you call it? Zuständigkeit. It's called Zuständigkeit in German. <laughs> who has the the uh, competence, the legal competence or somehow, I don't know how is it called, to do it. And then but politics is about uh, dispersing the responsibility or or putting the responsibility to other people because you want don't want to get burned in the political business no <laughs> so it's all it's all you you it's all a, a game of as uh, for instance there's a lot now we are starting to go into the topic now a little bit wildly but why not what i like now very much and about this crisis i like very much that it's a real sometimes a real burning glass or a no, a, a, a glass for, for problems, for things that come up, if you look closely. And a beautiful thing that happened that we have a, a hopefully it's getting, I hope that it get, will get larger and larger, a real nice corruption scandal again with our big party of Angela Merkel with the Christian Democratic Union and the sister party in Bavaria, the Christian Social Union. <laughs> um, and they have people, politicians that 
you know when they are in office and then they 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 make a kind of a consulting firm th now wh where they have 25 percent of the shares or something and then and in the in the beginning of the pandemic there was the the cry for masks we need masks there are no masks no uh, <laughs> this was all also the uh, you could not you should not buy a mask you should make yourself a mask because there are no masks and and uh, and then uh, some people uh, made a lot of people made a lot of money um with not only with masks but also with with um um uh, being an intermediator, no, by yeah. telling to this firm could, do, and then they cash in a nice uh, provision, as yeah. it is called. And some politicians did that, and now it's coming up one by one by one. And it's the party, and it, it it's the Christian Democratic Party, which is the center right, no, Christian blah blah blah, which is always. There, yeah, there is a famous saying by a social democrat. Uh, the black ones, this is this Christian Democratic Union, the black ones think they own the country. <laughs> which is, uh, uh <laughs> which is, uh, mm. because it's true. They think they own the country. They ju they are in it. They are just, it's just their habitus. Yeah. Their game. It's just their game. And it's all, it's all about, and this, 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 um, and it's coming, um, <laughs> And it's beautiful that it comes out. Uh, I have to say, I hope that it ha affects the <sighs> the next elections. Mm -hmm. But why? Yeah, did we, we had a scandal too. Yeah, um, and it's it's a very uh, interestingly Dutch one because I'm sure we have actually the same situation with with you, but then with the tests, so that some people on this outbreak management team is. Uh, is actually has stock uh, of the testing of which uh, testing which, which one the rapid tests or the the, the PCR tests uh, because in Germany we have a different situation that we have that the laboratories profited mm -hmm. a lot from yeah. the PCR tests yeah that yeah from yeah, this test that the, from yeah. the they say they said it is the gold standard of test no you take because it's true it detects every little vi virus that you have because yeah. it works like that which the is PCR not test. always a good thing <laughs> not always yeah. so useful actually but okay. yeah but okay it detects if you have the virus or not not in the the rapid test is only if you have a large quantity of the virus and if it's in your throat uh, so and uh, people said the PCR the antigen the rapid test is not uh, <laughs> trustworthy enough because then there will be some people negative who should be positive and apparently there was a, there is i mean there is a lobby for everything and it's coming out we will we will learn about that and there is a lobby for the laboratories and the pharmacies and they all want to and of course also doctors <laughs> but <laughs> in different kind of interest but laboratories and labor laboratory doctors who have the business of, of testing and they don't if everybody could have their rapid test at their home and just test themselves then there would be less there would be less uh, tests in the laboratories and so they they did not say uh, don't use rapid test because we will lose money they said ah no but if everybody tests with these tests at home then we will not know about that no then they will not report it then <laughs> and uh, so this is this are the arguments and this is why w we we need i mean th these rapid tests are they speak about them since last summer or before and uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and it's the same with masks. I mean, our our health minister somehow he make this because in December, uh, every every citizen above sixty years sh should get free, uh, free masks of these medicinal, these really good masks that also protect yourself. FFP two or N ninety five or something. Mm -hmm. And then how to do it? Yeah, we should. We cannot just mail them the masks. 
by via post or something. No, we have to create a voucher that we send them via post. The voucher has to be fail safe, and then they have to go from with the voucher to the pharmacy and take this. And the pharmacy can get six euros from us from the state, but they themselves buy the masks with one euro. <coughs> yeah, this is. And at the same time, yeah, yeah it's uh, and at the same time they're proud that they. Uh, this is another that they they are proud that they um, um, <laughs> made a deal and did not pay so much for a vaccine or something. So <laughs> it's very, it's uh, complicated. But you wanted yeah, to yeah. close your Dutch yeah. story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Our story was, um, and now I'm I'm a little distracted. Ah, yeah. I was to, it's actually not a Corona story, but it coincides with the Corona. I was really influenced by it. So there's this big, um, uh, a lot, a, a big group of people, uh, amongst whom a lot of the more economically weak were um, uh, put as fraud. Fro people who were committing fraud with uh, children's um, money, you know, the money that you get from the government when you uh, when you have a child, you have children. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, I think it was for it was for a child child care. Child care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and these people did not know that the, that the company that they had their children in was committing fraud, but the uh, tax office came to these people, not to the companies. And they asked the people to pay back uh, what they had what they had received because it was fraud. Ah, and some I heard about actually it. lost uh, lost their houses, lost their marriages, lost pretty much everything on the stress. I heard about it. And big uh, scandal. Yeah, yeah. Big scandal. People falsely accuse Falsely accused, accused of frauding yeah, the... falsely accused. And the scandal was actually that there was a hardliner um, a directive from the government that said you have to be super strict on fraud. And mm -hmm. there's no uh, way that you can, you know, be uh, deal with the situation or you have to like go in as a hardliner and, yeah. and go yeah. for the maximum. Yeah. And that's why nobody saw that these people actually did not have any, uh, yeah, any guilt. You know that I, I I heard about that in the podcast that I was listening, and I heard why why did they put this hard ruling this 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 how do you call this, this no no tolerance or zero tolerance yeah, policy? Yeah, no mercy. <laughs> because there was before there was a little scandal, or maybe for some people very big. You had something with Bulgarian people. Uh, was it Bulga Bul Bulgaria? I think Bulgaria. I don't know. Uh, some Bulgarian crooks, some some criminals who 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 uh, um, who um, yeah. defrauded, really defrauded your system in 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 Dutch of the childcare, yeah. and they and then there was uh, some villages in Bulgaria that lived of this childcare of that, and it was like some millions of euros, no? But that's and this that's is the EU, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 and this is some millions of euros. But and you can say, yeah, that's bad. Of course, this is not good to do that. But um, then you crack down on every. You have this zero tolerance yeah. policy, and um, yeah, it, it's compared it's to that, tax evasion, is it's I think yeah, it's yeah, exactly, minor exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, anyways, whatever. Uh, that's a whole uh, other uh, story. And you're absolutely right. And it's very much a sign of the times in Holland. Um, but the scandal broke. And those who were responsibly, politically responsible, only one of them, the Social Democrat, said, okay, I, uh, I cannot be minister anymore. I cannot uh, be in politics anymore. I step down from everything. Uh, it's over. Mm. And... Uh, and took his responsibility and and all the rest including our prime minister who was prime minister at that time somehow managed to say okay <laughs> you know we are in crisis it was very bad mistakes happen we'll do better um but we cannot afford to have a scandal at the moment mm -hmm. and then 
the scandal uh, was so big because it was so bad that uh, the the government did fall. But he, the prime minister himself, made it fall so he could keep the reins mm. in hands. You know, he he yeah. said, "Okay, now we cannot go on. So I, I, this government will fall, and we go to elections." And somehow, the atmosphere because of this crisis and many other things in the country is come to this that this prime minister who was responsible politically managed to at the evening after in the week after uh, the government fell <laughs> that his party rises <laughs> two seats in the house <laughs> not only do they not take responsibility but they are also applauded and uh, yeah, and given like uh, even more. Yeah. So yeah, that's I what the crisis also have done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you just had elections, no? You you Mark Rutte. Yeah, again, we just had elections. They again. They elected, won again. No? They won yeah, again. Yeah, they won. Yeah, I yeah. Re that's why I really really hope that this, that uh, the our uh, party. I mean, I like the other strange thing was that. During this pandemic, Angela Merkel as a person, I really like somehow. I like her style. I don't agree with most of the politics mm. that they are doing. But her style is just genius. And it's really nice to have this. <laughs> Although, maybe now also we need, you c if we look to the USA now, which has a very different which has also different you see also now the the face of the um, of the uh, how do you call of, of the um, transatlantic hawks again sometimes sometimes no but apart from all the problems of, of 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 Biden there was the speech now which he gave on the crisis and this incredible big state funded uh, america rescue program which you can say and his speech was was really really with a lot of pathos but american in an american way of course and also america f no american exceptionalism mm. american patriotism everything yeah but it was a good speech and it was really incredible how so it's the complete opposite of angela merkel who who is very rational and cold and uh, but also yeah. this so i really hope i i I found myself to say, please, uh, Angela, stay <laughs> somehow, <laughs> but she will not. And I'm now. I hope that her party will fall with her, because she says she is not. But everybody else who is behind that now is very weak. Mm. And I really, really hope that this is the problem of the left that they cannot get their shit together somehow. It's re it's the moment for them. But here they cannot get their. <laughs> it's really a tra tragedy somehow but it could be well i don't know le let's uh, <laughs> uh, uh talk about that uh, over over a, a good drink some other time <laughs> simon and and see because actually you you brought us right to the doorstep of the biggest show the biggest <laughs> performance of this year <laughs> yeah. which happened of course in the u.s uh, uh yeah. capital yeah. and which was addictive, like a uh, Mexican uh, telenovela. Yeah. We all know, of course, uh, of what we are speaking. And, and, uh, and as, I mean, it was tragicomic, right? Because I really got addicted to, to watching the, the news from the US mm -hmm. with all these uh, very funny and sharp commenters that they have, these, these uh, you know, Tonight Show and, uh, mm -hmm. and, and this, uh, all this. And and we all got addicted. They got addicted because the only thing they had to do was read the ac the actual tweets, <laughs> and the actual news, <laughs> yeah. with their special imitation of of this Mister Horrible, and <laughs> and that was it. But yeah. it was it. There was a lot of real tragedy too, and uh, and that was a very weird performance this year. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, that that's true. <laughs> Actually, I didn't think of that when I was looking back at uh, at the at the year because somehow, 
it's somehow you just i mean this biden speech now uh, really uh, and also w what they're doing but now you just okay they're doing their thing yeah they're keeping vaccines that could also be exported but uh, okay that's their thing because they want to have and it's incredible it's so, they want to have a fourth of july independence day with barbecue i think he said it in the speech I want no. He's yeah. They, they but it's this is from a politician. You is it's if you are in there and you are really suffering from this crisis. Or, and then there's this president who says, from first of May we will have vaccine for everybody, adult who wants it. And w I want that on fourth of July that you can gather together in your family and make a barbecue without. <laughs> I I find it it's, it's incredible. Amazing, huh? It's amazing. And it shows also, I think, how performative the United States are. Mm. You know, that these rituals of performing Americanism, I, I should not say Americanism, I should say something like United Statesanism, mm -hmm. <laughs> is, is so strong and so important for this young, still young or maybe teenage country that is and I think here in Europe, we, we hardly, you know, after having had all the second, all the 20th century and all the nihilists and the relative, uh, we, we can't even imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that importance of performing yeah. your nationality. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. So, uh, we can... <laughs> so, okay. yeah other oh. other highlights yeah, but, but uh, what you said before was interesting because when i do, when i think back of march and you were you were mm. saying before that there is a c i will paraphrase it now you said before that kind of the politics politicians or the politics is um i think today will be a little bit more than one hour but <laughs> that you said before that the politics they have kind of um fetishism of the rules, no? Of the rules that need to be obeyed, or something mm -hmm, like that. You mm -hmm. said that. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, that yeah. They, in this crisis, definitely. And somehow, I cannot now in my position now. I cannot, mm. I cannot um, not say that if I hear that some mayor of one town um, sees a group of young people who are making party somewhere in the street, and he says, "Oh, this is bad." They're doing it, but we have to be in lockdown. And I cannot not see that he c in somehow he is uh, <laughs> taking some pleasure in being able now to civilize yeah. these <laughs> these pagan behaviors or something like yeah. that. No, these bucolic. Yeah, these, interesting. Uh, no? back yeah. And this is now, for me, in my perception, very different than in the beginning in March yeah. and April and May because I was and also a lot of people and I was completely um, I was completely um, uh, I was agreeing trusting yeah I was kind of uh, it was a very strange situation it was happening suddenly there was information if you looked for it there were people experts who were talking and I kind of i was feeling yes this is the right thing to do now let's all stay at home and not go out for the next uh, you know next period until we see what's going on and this was this is this e extremely different feeling which was then to mm. now mm. so maybe we can a little bit yeah. go into that feeling because i was when when we said we look back at the year i was struggling to to remember how this feeling also of before was no before the <laughs> yeah <laughs> this pandemic yeah. hit. and in this time there was so many things at the same time and yeah 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 it's maybe nice uh, to re <laughs> it's just every time you bring up a point i look at my list i see oh yeah there there it is and uh <laughs> this one too it's again um, floating a bit between highlights and lowlights. Uh, 
I actually put it down as a low light. I put it down as losing my faith mm -hmm. um, and, and becoming quite distrustful. At a certain point, it was even so bad that uh, that I did not trust what was on the official news site. I did not when, say uh, they at are what, lying. At, at, what, at what time was that, more or less? This started, I guess, in... Uh, in May, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when when a lot of the of the uh, you know when when started to appear a very strict official story, and started to come also this this uh, one voice from our crisis management team that was always voiced by the same person, and there was absolute secrecy about what was going on there absolutely secret and no communication and the people the scientists outside were also questioning this and and they were that was the first time that those people were really put down as murderers and uh, uh, crazies and conspiracy theorists whereas that was not necessarily what they were doing they were um, uh, questioning and raising sometimes alternative uh, interpretations of numbers and of statistics and uh, and it was very really cracking my brain I remember that moment that that I thought but science is about dialogue and science is about uh, different opinions that that need to clash and that need to test each other and and you can't hide behind this is a crisis forever <laughs> You know, after two months, you can't say anymore. Uh, we don't have time to have a dialogue or to hear different opinions. And it's basically uh, still similar, which is very disturbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one hi one highlight. Maybe this is also a little bit different story for 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 you than for me. Mm -hmm. One highlight here in Germany was the podcast by the virologist Christian Drosten. Ah, oh, yeah who is yeah. a, a, the, the Berlin Chari Charité, who is an expert in coronaviruses since a lot of time. Okay. And he made like this... Like before? Yeah, before, yeah, yeah. Uh, he just, uh, yeah. He is, she just studies coronaviruses as a nerd, uh, <laughs> and then suddenly he's getting famous, and he is because he... <laughs> He's one of the few. He, I think he. That's amazing. He actually, he co he co-developed also the PCR test. So this test that really somehow they. So he's a real real expert in the international community, along with other people, and he, as as I already told, he was approached by journalists to make a podcast. The journalist said, "Can we make five minutes each day on the coronavirus?" And he said, five minutes, I cannot. It has. To, I have to explain. It's not possible." Okay, yeah. so let's just Great. do it somehow. Yeah. And then he made every day since February last year. And it's going on until now uh, a, a, with them, a podcast. And he, he explained some topic, was really burning questions every day. Wow. And it was half an That's hour impressive. or 40 minutes. Yeah. And he was not bullshitting you. He was not saying uh, this is like that, like that. He was sometimes comp complex co he was trying to make it simple but he was not trying to simplify it and he was always um uh, uh trying to be scientific so yeah so and interesting and now it's continuing until now now it's not every day of course but it's every week and it's almost two hours the podcast always so he's really wow. taking some time and he's reading studies and trying to communicate and this for me gave a lot of 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 um, yeah. trust and interesting that you have a highlight there where i yeah. have a low light yeah and this gave a, and he interestingly in one um because he is also one of the uh how do you say consiglieri <laughs> one of the <laughs> advisors <laughs> advisors sorry. of the government along with others so and he said in one of his podcasts he said how this was because in march in one moment, the first thing I think that closed was the schools. Yeah. And there was in in March uh, the first real outbreak that we had was was after Carnival in a little little yeah. town. Yeah, in, near uh, Holland. Uh, near Holland, 
but also yeah. near Cologne, so uh, in this Rhine region yeah. where they where they and um, there there was an there was an outbreak and they had a crisis meeting with the government and the government asked what no what to do blah 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 and they said the or he said or what he what he reports is that what he said was that in this town or in this region of the outbreak. If you have an outbreak like this, it's perfectly sensible to close the schools. No? Yeah. yeah. Then left. <laughs> Next day, he reads in the paper, politics closes all schools. No? It's right. So it's interesting because he also refers sometimes how this, it's not, <laughs> it's, it's a complex process. And they, of course, they say I in this case i would do this or maybe this would be good to do this and then the politics t takes a decision so they take the decision to close the schools immediately and um <laughs> um it's so it's uh, yeah so this transparency of him uh, uh, referring and uh, reporting what what he's doing and uh, it was very important <laughs> yeah, it was a highlight for me and also yes, it was also a highlight for the podcasting because it was crazy for radio people to think that they could make a something more than five minutes about science or right <laughs> or and that yeah, people fantastic. would listen to no fantastic yeah we really direly missed yeah. uh, uh, someone like that actually and then yeah. there was others or no there were there were other mm -hmm. also other uh, experts that uh, there is another yeah. virologist who talks a bit more popular let's say no also some different but it basically says the same and they uh, so this is interesting to hear different different voices and it's 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 important yeah so. yeah it is yeah so going on um with the list yeah um do you have one that connects to this uh so we had the the performance from abroad from across the atlantic <laughs> we had the uh, performance of our own uh, governments and uh, and the media also yeah yeah i have because now we finally after 45 minutes maybe could talk about theater uh, we had this this as i said for us here for me it was a sudden very strange situation everybody was there was a real solidarity ki kind of it was this Quickly, also, people said we're not in all in the same boat, no? Like Christian said in, Christian Grüni said in our year, in our end of the year podcast, we are not in the same boat, we're in the same storm with a lot yeah. of different boats. Yeah. Big boats, small boats, no boats. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, that's the terrible truth. So that's true. But some kind of solidarity or some kind of you really somehow we were all in it in this moment together and what the theaters did and also what we did i don't know you <laughs> we started to put content as you say content now today nowadays you say content you put it's uh, sign up this is always okay. called content which is very <laughs> yeah we'll uh, we'll talk about it later <laughs> <laughs> uh, you put content into the internet you make a video you play songs you ha you stream your performance you put this online and that online and that and all the theaters started to uh, to making some either some kind of special program which they put online or they published their performances which they recorded at some moment and it was all streaming into this into this internet because th it wa there was a lot of in that sense generosity Hmm. of of course also yeah we needed to kind of check in to each other we needed to say hey we are here <laughs> and how are you somehow we also did yeah. some video of a song which we played for our people that we know and um, it was kind of all about um, yeah. communicating in this way and to say it's all okay it will be we will see it will be over at some moment or something like that no and um this was yeah. i find very interesting because it was yeah hmm? yeah that was definitely a highlight also uh you know in an initiative like the thousand and one fires from the yeah. parliament of practices 
was very much on that uh, idea of of let's uh, make ourselves visible to each other also to feel not so alone and to show that uh, uh, have this sense that all these little things still make a big fire you know there's still something burning and warm and uh, and creative going on yeah um and uh, but yeah i actually wrote uh um how the pandemic opened up the connection with colleagues worldwide yes um and this of course is also because we were forced to accept zoom as a platform or its equivalent jitsi or uh, whatever platforms people were using so distance suddenly it did not matter you are uh, isolated from your neighbors and and you cannot also you know reach uh, uh, south america so distance evaporates and we all meet in this digital space and i think you know the the relate what what was strong for me there is that the relationships between the colleagues of very different uh, groups and very different directions um, got a lot of focus whereas the productiveness went down <laughs> so mm -hmm. we were not for focus so much on producing 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 because it was yeah besides the internet which very quickly lost its charm i think for many yes yeah yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there was the living relationship with your colleagues that was actually the most interesting thing yeah. that you could engage in. And and that's something actually really strong that that I would uh, hope that we keep. Mm. Yeah, I also, yeah, this is, um, this is also, it's getting I also asked uh, Patricia what she thought about, and she also said these international. She said international relationships. Mm. So that means that the the natural uh, a natural thing to just invite or to speak or to collaborate with other people who are not there at the moment, not to 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 keep the contact, to look for contact, to have some regular contact, uh, to exchange. This is um, this is. Ha this <laughs> has been made a lot easier. I mean, it's yeah. apart from the infrastructure that you have to use and you have to, uh, but it's 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 um, it's a lot easier. And also, what happens then? It's some kind of. Uh, it's interesting how these dynamics of the of the group or of the discussion changes in the very. F some people maybe when they come together in this digital uh, video conference situation they change people who are timid normally they are more willing to participate mm -hmm. because uh, it somehow as because m one of the feelings was that this internet thing and the online th um, video conference it's all of course but it's all it's all without the presence and it's all, this means it's bad but <laughs> For some people, I think, and, and I can, I, mm. sometimes I can also calm myself in because I'm not an extroverted person always. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that was my synthesizer. <laughs> uh, that I, was very expressive. <laughs> I'm not always an uh, extroverted person. I can also be very introverted. And uh, this makes me, of course, in meetings with people, I can also very well be at the side and don't say anything because I'm just just also a presence thing no you have mm -hmm. the <laughs> bodily presence the physical presence but in the in this um, in the context of the there is it's somehow for some people it's easier to participate because they are everybody's in this box yeah. and there is not bigger presence or smaller presence maybe only if it, if something famous is there but even fame somehow vanishes a little bit maybe i don't know because of this well i know I, I do notice that some people have a for instance a very loud voice on the zoom <laughs> <and they> <laughs> i noticed the the next thing is that that zoom or this uh, there are people that then the question of bad sound comes but it's another question that's yeah. another question yeah. <laughs> talented sound he's very talented on the zoom sound <laughs> uh. Yeah, but but there's another aspect of this uh, Zoom 
especially with with us artists started using it so much is that uh, that we really explored a terra incognita mm -hmm. there which is a rare thing to uh, experience as so collectively and so intensively and i think that that it might have shown us also uh, be still in the process of showing us that we are really quite good at that you know we have a lot of tools uh, that make us pretty good explorers of this space and and pretty good you know monkeys that look every corner of this new jungle and uh, and look underneath every leaf to see if there's maybe a juicy caterpillar hiding there or you know can make a nest in some unexpected uh, uh, way and I think this um, I've been thinking that a lot after speaking with a colleague of my, my neighbor actually she's not a colleague she's a neighbor who works with uh, teams on the internet who do a lot of zoom work mm -hmm. and she says it looks like it's functioning but it's not really functioning you know the the exchanges are so diminished and people's um, mm -hmm. responses to each other are so diminished and i as a team leader actually have no idea what's going on with people yes and that's not normal for me and uh, and we talked how you know this this artist um maybe could share something of their uh techniques of becoming present in an unknown space and and becoming as at home there as uh, as in any other space physical space which I think would be a, a mighty challenge, seeing as that we will not be rid of this Zoom <laughs> very soon. Yeah. And then there's also, I think there's this, there is this expression, Zoom fatigue, which I can understand a lot. Yes, so you just, you just get fed up. <laughs> yeah, with your, eyes burn. <laughs> your eyes burn. And you get fed up with people posting pictures of uh, <laughs> of, <laughs> of, their of Zoom of meetings, Zoom meetings <laughs> and say hey great meeting we're today for the new project and it's it's um, I hope that this is somehow it stays I hope that we can that we can overcome or we can find the and put it in the right place no the tools yeah when we need yeah, it exactly but that is exactly that this this over abundancy <sighs> of this <laughs> it gets yeah gets away and then we also can then we can also then um cut it where we don't want it or don't need it exactly exactly um, <laughs> yeah yeah because i think that's <laughs> where I'm it also belongs in the I low light <laughs> yeah i think in some moment we need also a revolution for this uh, podcast and say we will make it radically not with it we will only meet <laughs> so if, even if in it means pod. it's only even if it means it's only once in three months or once in one month but we meet and we meet with somebody and we sit together and we uh, some this is needs to be done in some moment we ha need to get rid of this also we have to look for this other um <laughs> let's so see so uh, yeah 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 let's no see. hasty promises here no no, so no. <laughs> So other then, highlights yeah no and uh, one highlight for me was when I, when we speak about performance now now we spoke about yeah. relation between but now performance performance there was no performance possible there was um and um uh performance was yeah everybody was sending their material into the internet and then quickly it was also getting it was it, uh, it it was uh getting very crowded in the internet and I th people had too much to watch and the generosity kind of turned into yeah into a t being tired of of, of doing this yeah. and also uh, realizing that it's somehow also putting all your content without payment into the internet is not really the real the good strategy <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. why this is why in the second yeah. lockdown that we had lockdown the second wave which started in germany in november 
No, the theaters did not put anything. I mean, we did not. It no. was a completely different. There and was, there was silence from the people, from the audiences, because they had yeah. the same fatigue. Yeah, they, they had like the same. Yeah. And, um, but so, so I, I don't know if there are some kind of successful or good performances in this moment, mm. but I've, I, re I know mm. that in some moment, now I look at performance, not only at theater, because there's a lot of performance, and I wanted to look with you at, at a performance which was kind of uh, important in a, because I think it was one of the first performances without spectators. And I found mm. it really touching, <laughs> although all the context I don't like very much. So the institution of the Catholic Church, I'm talking about the Catholic Church and the Pope now, I don't really like so much because of a lot of things. But the Pope I like kind of, and I found it really interesting Uh, what happened, uh, what he did, because there was an, ex an exceptional blessing in the end of March. I thought it was Easter, but it was not Easter. It was exceptional. It was just in the end of March, 27th of March, it was a blessing Urbi et Orbi, which is a kind of a special thing, a special performance, let's say, which is staged <laughs> at a <laughs> certain moment. This I really like about the church because it's performance, special performances. They are not like this every day no, no, there are special performances for special circumstances and ideally fulfill kind of some kind of um of function yeah. ritual and function yes it's somehow like a little bit like the biden speech because mm. biden is not a the perfect president or has not has a lot of bad things but somehow he really has some healing function I think, and this was also for not um, yeah for for people believing in the in the Catholic Church maybe yes, but also uh, it was uh, an interesting statement. One of the first performances without spectators like this, and, and he especially did it. And of course, we will just hear the atmosphere in the podcast. We see the the Vatican. It's raining. This was two weeks after. We shut everything down, no? <laughs> and uh, a little bit before Easter, and we, of course, there's a very nice uh, <laughs> cinematographic uh, uh, montage of the cameras going into the Christ on the cross, and uh, you see the empty square there on the Vatican, and there is one one chair in the middle, and it's in raining the rain. in the rain, and there is fires, and there are some nice LED lights on the ground. <laughs> 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 and you hear this this silence some birds even yeah kind of this mm. spe this special situation that you that you kind of the context of the whole world of the pandemic gives the gives the demand of or gives the possibility to just film an empty square with rain no And everybody. And no music, eh? This and is no, mu very no music, uh, no commentator. Yeah. Yeah, it's very strong, eh? Because the dramaturgy of the reality actually makes makes these images speak. Yeah, exactly. The dramaturgy of the whole world in going into crisis. Yeah. Wow, he was. Wa he's walking. A long way, yeah. Yes. <laughs> He's walking in the rain yeah. without, without yeah. umbrella. <laughs> And now you, you see how big it is also. Yeah. The square. And how and empty. Yeah. This I found. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, there is someone waiting for him. Yes. And there are a few spectators far away. Yeah. I guess you would not call it spectators at a... M at a <laughs> Now Pope is approaching this chair in the middle. 
I really I have to say now watching it again, I really, really like this performance. <laughs> yeah. It yeah, is I nome del Padre, del Figlio, dello Spirito Santo. And you hear Preghiamo. You hear he's out of breath. Dio onnipotente e misericordioso. Guarda la nostra dolorosa condizione. Conforta i tuoi figli e apri i nostri cuori alla speranza, perché sentiamo in mezzo a noi la tua presenza di Padre, per Cristo nostro Signore. Yeah. It's true, eh? It's... Uh, yeah. I find it's it true. really... I find it really, really, really powerful. He uh, standing, breathing hard because he's an old man, no? Yeah. Um, and um, mm. reading this out the, of the of the presence of 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 God in His Son, no? In these times of 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 crisis, let's say he was quoting something. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> Uh, this was one performance which I wanted to bring. Uh, one of uh, one example of performance w without spectators or performance in this, which I found also worked. Uh, I mean, worked in the sense of I looked at it and I was touched by it in some some way, and um, mm, worked also with uh, with uh, streaming and um, um, it's uh, yeah. As we said, it was a. Uh, Yeah, strange. Apart from the the, um, apart from the from the truth or from the reality of the pandemic and of the suffering, it is interesting how this 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 limitation forces you to do something new, no, <laughs> mm. and to do something special, something extraordinary, and this somehow was really extra or is really extraordinary. In the sense that you've you have nothing there; it's only the rain, and then he walks alone in the whole square. And uh, I don't know if if it's uh, maybe other people they. Uh, um, it's not that I'm religious, very religious, but uh, <laughs> so I maybe other people make fun of it or they don't. But I think there is some kind of. I think as theater as theater people, we can understand what is the power mm -hmm. of that. Yes. Oh. Yes, I agree. And I mean, the fact that this is uh, coming from a religion does not always stop it from being <laughs> powerful for everyone else also. Yeah? Yeah. Transcending its own audience. So, uh, yeah, you you have to add, you want to add something to that? What did you see? Or we can also go on because, um, so this yeah, was. Yeah, let's go on. Let's go let's on go because on. I'm actually very anxious to see your other clip right on the heels of this. Uh huh. My other clip? Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Then the other, which is uh, then, sudden, then um, one of the first things that actually uh, could work again was uh, soccer, no, it was football. And a lot of people, you mean that, no? That we looked yeah. into that. <laughs> I really struggled <laughs> to find some <laughs> clips of that <laughs> because, um, but it's uh, f for some people the the Pope is important, but for a lot of more people, football is important. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, 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 and uh, th that was really um, they they worked uh, and th but there is also a lot of hate or a lot of decep de decep you de deceive uh, the football no you say it's uh, it's uh, like uh, gladiators in ancient rome or something it's no it's not art of course it's it's just sports but it's very popular and then this was this they also have a big lobby and there's a big a lot a lot of a lot of money involved no we will leave that money thing at the side because it's an on top <laughs> <laughs> oh all right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they managed to kind of, with their connections and also with money, they managed to get into continuing business as usual in some way. Mm. And actually, it's a good approach, <laughs> I have to say. It's, it's, I, 
uh, although as a lot of people also people say maybe how can you go on playing football when people need this and uh, blah 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 no but actually what we what we said before and this is some kind of a, of a, of a also a threat through that that you don't in german there's a word called misgunst so you don't mm. like yeah don't that miss the other uh, one you don't yeah. want the other begrudge. one begrudge don't begrudge yeah uh, grudge, the other one misgunst. their pleasure because yeah. you can't yeah. have yours <laughs> exactly <laughs> and yeah. i think uh, although there have been scandals and of, of although soc football players are live in a different universe and <laughs> they are <laughs> too young <Multi> to put. <laughs> too young to uh, earn that much of money but um <laughs> i'm saying yeah. as an old person <laughs> 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 but uh, maybe it's but they managed to find a way they uh, bought tests they tr they made a, a system of testing and of blah and of quarantine and and they managed to get the permission to to work very uh, very early on in may i think it was in may it started already the normal league the bundesliga it started again and i have to say it's kind of they 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 achieved something no for themselves <laughs> for the interest <laughs> and it works until today without spectators of course but it's yeah. rolling no um yeah. i mean yeah, the other aspect is that the live spectator for football is not so important for the money. So more important for the money, is the, exactly. Is the <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> but this is the interesting struggle because then we see also in the beginning of this we see these players, uh, uh, these players perform and play in in stadiums without spectators, and really everybody is kind of also pissed off. Also, we have a bar, as you know, and we also um, show football and. People came to uh, to to see it, um, and they said it's just not the same. It's just, and without yeah, the fans, the no, it's, it's boring. Yeah. And the silence, and this to just hear this is also nice to hear this again. <laughs> and it, it yeah, it's it's like a local game, no? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It every yeah, that's true. Uh, Manchester United. No, what is it? Manchester United against uh, Linz? Austrian? No, no. Europe League match. No spectators. This is actually in the middle of March last year. Just some parents. Uh, <laughs> by the <laughs> That's true. Some angry, angry fathers. <laughs> yeah. And you hear all these screams of the football players and it's really awkward and yeah. you sit yeah. there and and then if you if you if you miss that if you miss that then you uh, 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 this. there is a yeah they put some some sounds underneath. Yeah, there is. There was the sound yeah. of fans. So, uh, but I missed yeah. it now. So actually, they've become really clever with that sound. I think they've become really good. Yeah. And it makes all the difference. So this was. This is also performance. I think yeah. didn't they? They at some point put these really scary like mannequins in the audience, also, like also fake people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. Was, uh, hideous yeah and nightmarish uh, idea let's hear uh, one of the players of Borussia Dortmund of Germany say it's shit to play without fans Erling a tough loss today um, yeah, just tell us how disappointed are you right now as much as you can get um, uh, not a good game and uh, we knew it was going to be tough and uh, yeah, I'm uh, very disappointed we let in two goals and we don't score. Then, uh, then it's getting hard. Um, but we we didn't get the rhythm and we didn't get the flow in the game. So then, it's difficult because uh, they're also good, you know. Of course, one topic: uh, the atmosphere. It was a bizarre atmosphere. Um, how do you experience it? I I miss my fans to be honest uh, from Dortmund. Uh, yeah, it's it was weird to play. 
when you think of the derby without our fans, what comes to your mind? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> easy that it's it's. Uh, <laughs> I need them to be to say it easy. Oh, oh no! That's I need really them. sweet, actually. But I think that's it's true. Really I sweet. think he means it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean. It, it's so true and it's something that uh, that I think I've always thought audience spectators do not realize how important they are not just to pay the tickets but really to make the event alive and have any kind of um, energy and specialness and and meaning no, maybe meaning can be without uh, spectators, but this energy of being together. Yeah. And uh, this is, is one of my missions, you know, in with performance to somehow share that with audience. Like, no, yes, you think you're coming to look at us because we are important, but it's actually <laughs> you who are creating yeah. this importance with your ears and your eyes and... Uh, yeah, that's very yeah, that's very true. This exchange of energy, and it's actually the same in football. So, it's interesting yeah. to look at that. It's also yeah. interesting. Maybe we should do. Did you notice how he? The first thing is that I really like. I should watch more football interviews because how can you talk about nothing so eloquently? Yes, <laughs> you know, it's 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 yes. almost beautiful how to. Uh, journalists yeah. have again to and again and again and again and, and again. It's always yeah. the same, yeah. but they they talk <laughs> I again. I know, I know. It's, it's, it's so an art. in vain. It's so superfluous. Yeah. It so does not matter for anything in the world. But yeah, it's fantastic. They yeah. elaborate on that and they and they speak yeah. on that and uh, it's and pure poetry. No, it's uh, so, 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 somehow. And did you notice how he talked about rhythm and flow? Mm -hmm. So I. Yeah. I I think it was. Yeah, it's very. And another thing that's interesting is that in such a, um, a society where merit is placed above almost anything else, mm. that these sports people, and especially these football, these soccer heroes, they remind us because <laughs> always 11 of the 22 lose, right? <laughs> and and they, <laughs> I'm always so interested to hear them speak about losing mm -hmm. and uh, how they can almost make it sound like winning sometimes it's really interesting or or they can really help us to um, accept the sometimes very consistent failure mm. that happens to to a sports team or just this inability to reach each other this inability to grab the moment and excel and I think uh, there is a, an, an aspect of soccer that we could uh, celebrate a little more because many times it is always found it's also found a bit irritating you know, how these soccer players are coached to survive the interview afterwards when mm -hmm. <laughs> when they lost. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's a moment of great uh, uh, great beauty, also. Yeah. Wow, I, I really loved uh, that you brought this, uh, Simon. <laughs> Actually, I did not bring it, but it reminds me of, uh, you know, how I got addicted to watching the US um, news every morning, right? And these uh, uh, guys, mainly, uh, that do this shows in front of a live audience and that, you know, they really play with the audience. Now they had to uh, somehow do it in front of an empty camera or in an empty room with just a camera. And mm -hmm. it was really interesting over the course of this year to see how they changed all of them uh, in dealing with it. So Stephen Colbert got really good mm -hmm. at being completely self-sufficient, <laughs> but having these sometimes little interactions with his wife or with the camera... Uh, people, but he kept it very um, uh, restrained, like mm -hmm. very, very small. Mm. Whereas uh, someone like a, a, 
what is his name? This the blonde, the blonde dude, James Corden. James Corden. Yeah, he with his crew, which is quite huge because he has a big band mm -hmm. there on the uh, in in the studio. Over the year, got almost like a party vibe with his crew mm -hmm. and with the band. That when you watch them now, they are like just like teenagers in the, at a party just doing insider jokes and horsing around with each other it's getting so that that was really interesting how they coped with uh, yes. shifting their performance yeah that's true i kind of uh, i think i i kind of like most uh, john oliver how they dealt dealt with that because they just took yeah. out everything and put them into this blank white yeah. Basically, so they really st they, they 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 changed it. They re no spectator, no interaction, just yeah. this vi this white white um, table and white yeah. uh, completely. And yeah, then he, he plays also with it. Then he plays also with it, and this I this is also. Uh <laughs> so that was uh, that was also interesting. Actually, you know, I think um, I think this very brilliantly some rounds up uh, uh, the performances that that were going on this year <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure I could oh there's maybe one thing that that I would like to mention in because it relates to how human relationships somehow got so much focus this year yeah. and uh, it is that I got extremely addicted to this podcast called The Moth, mm -hmm. where uh, people tell real life stories as they remember it. And it's always mentioned that these are true stories as those who are telling it remember them. And they are told without notes. So in front of a live audience, that's the concept of The Moth. And... Um, Firstly, what what really I thought was interesting is that they are directed, these people, they train with or they, they work with a director and then they tell the story. So you get a crafted story that is nonetheless so related to this person that it it's really a seductive uh, uh, mix. And then during this year, of course, they could not... Uh, uh, do it live in front of a live audience so they started to just uh, re replay old uh, old stories so you still had this uh, this audience there yeah i'm not sure why why this relates to the pandemic for me but it but it was definitely something of hearing this very human side of performance which is almost uh, you know someone telling about their life is the most human mm. naked kind of performance that you could uh, it's almost like on the verge is this still performance mm. and uh, it's maybe nice to just hear a tiny little um, fragment from that just to hear the tone of the of this uh humanness so the day that i was born this was recorded february 23 it says 23rd of february so a little bit before okay yeah yeah so it is uh, maybe before the before uh, the shit went how do you say yeah before the shit hit the fan hit the fan i know uh, which is a horrible image <laughs> I kinda, yeah. it's it's great <laughs> but it's even better if you translate it into german i have to say <laughs> so the day that i was born ended my sister's four year one woman show and unknown to me at the time, it also began my very lengthy audition for the important role of supporting actress in her show. The trouble was, uh, I was not what she envisioned for this very important role in her life. Um, she had tea parties 
I played T-ball. Um, she liked to arrive late to parties to you know have a grand entrance. I liked to arrive early so that I could know where the exits and the bathrooms were at all times. For Halloween, she was Cinderella. I was the pumpkin. <laughs> And she very much was a performer and was comfortable on the stage, and I preferred to be in the audience. Um, that was until one fateful day in eighth grade, of all the grades, middle school. What happened? <laughs> you got curious. <laughs> you got hooked. She, huh? she, 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 she discovered theater. No. It, it is about her uh, getting a landing a role at, in her school play but it's the only ah. role she ever had so she ah okay, okay 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 yeah <laughs> but um but there's <laughs> i think this fragment uh, shows very well how how uh, um inviting these toys are to listen to because they're so unpretentious mm. and uh and heartfelt And really true, because mm. they are true. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that filled filled a lot of my lonely COVID uh, walks. Yeah. My daily yeah. walks. Yeah, walks. <laughs> Do we have uh, other, um, just Rick, other things that worked? For instance, there were small things that worked. For instance, one pianist, Igor Levit, He is uh, quite famous in the Twitter bu bubble because he is mm. also politically engaged, active pianist, no classical pianist. He started to perform on Twitter, and uh, not perform. He, he he just rehearses every day, no? And he mm. just puts his mm -hmm. phone ah. and and then he wrote right. on, on Twitter, "Ah, tonight I'm going to play this and that. I'll see you there." No, and then he put his phone there without any. Mm. sound uh, equipment really crappy sound <laughs> but he just <laughs> practiced on his piano oh yeah on his Steinway yeah. and Sons or what yeah, I don't know <laughs> he practiced uh, <laughs> Beethoven or he practiced Chopin or, he, or Bach and uh, kind of every day at, at seven o'clock or something this was also something very it, this worked yeah. because it was kind yeah. of a mixture between between generosity and just communic mm -hmm. it was communication with people and people expected that then and they said where is uh, oh are, are we seeing you again what are you going to play tonight and this is really beautiful if yeah. if this happens um, different than from putting just something on 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 youtube no some film that uh, it's really different yeah it's that's a, a good it's point a yeah it's a, it's a different and there's it's also yeah it's a different kind of relationship and different kind of communication that is is yep. is en engaging it re reminds me of the intimacy the strange in intimacy that you get on the zoom that you are staring into each other's rooms and yeah. um and and this sounds a bit similar in the sense that you are not getting a concert you're listening into his practice yeah which is a completely different level of uh, of opening up your um in a in a, as it sounds like also quiet quiet way like quietly inviting that's a beautiful example mm. yeah yeah The, the things that worked online and the things that we got very tired of, uh, it's hmm. it's interesting that I think I, I think we somehow discovered that we are not television makers, we are not uh, YouTube stars, we are not Instagram uh, influencers. It it is not that what translates well to the, hmm. <laughs> to the web. Of, of what we can do as artists and theater makers. And yeah. it's not to say that there's no artist that, that, that artists can't be influencers, but at that moment they are maybe not really artists anymore when they, when they start really to play that game. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. So, what is the conclusion? Yeah, but yeah. what is the what is our? <laughs> where do we go from there to today? Where today? do we go from here? Where do we go from <laughs> there? What is the what is the argument of our? I will in the in the end. I will show uh, as a kind of an outro. I will show you uh, a performer on online. Uh, a comedian, a British comedian that I discovered during this, the pandemic, mm. who I love very, very, very much. And he is also, um, how do you say, um, he was not very known before and uh, mm. apparently got quite famous in the internet um, due to his, um, due to the genius idea of of filming, of making a montage between a politician who has a speech and he impersonating, mm. he impersonating, and it's called the room next door, he impersonating somebody with headphones in the other room who is telling this politician or commenting or saying what he should say. And then, and yeah, it was a simple and genius idea and he made it great. But he has a other, other little small films And uh, it's a great uh, humor, br very British humor, mm. <laughs> which I like. And That's we are great. Going yeah. And later we are going Wonderful. to listen uh, to to one of to him, Michael uh, Spicer. Uh, before But before we do that, yeah. I want to rectify m myself because I'm just hearing on uh, over and over the echo of what I just said that artists cannot what? do art ah, online. Ah, <laughs> ah at this. Uh, I, <laughs> I really you meant want to take that echo. back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. No. I, uh, Uh, you want to take it back? I want to take it back <laughs> because that's not exactly what I meant. I, I do think it is absolutely <laughs> possible and it's being done all the time. Um, but not by conforming to the rules of the of the platforms that was Yes. Yeah, I also think that but really there is different uh, influ I, I heard the, uh, for instance the the topic of influencers. I heard the mm -hmm. very nice definition that influencers influencers are people selling you advert advert advertisement. Yeah. This is the yeah. how the, the people selling advertisement. Yeah. But uh so there isn't uh, actually they're not doing anything. The real influencers they're selling you advertisement and then there is of course people who do something strange artistic and it's other people like it yeah and i yeah, which and is a you different cannot game, huh? and you cannot really predict also w what it is you can of course with maybe a lot of um, money pr but there also is the possibility for a very small thing and these are a lot of things of course like that happen for instance this guy who Who, who made a video on TikTok with the uh, with the shanty song, the Wellerman. Soon oh, yeah. will the Wellerman come. Da -dum 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 yeah. da -dum -dum. Yeah. And this and I don't know. This is <laughs> uh, with the effect that all the young people now want to be uh, YouTube stars because. <laughs> It can also be a kind of thing that you search for, no? to have some idea and to. But with a lot of people, it happens that they really have something, and it just grows out of this regular commitment, and they just do it for fun. On YouTube, there is another. There is an old guy playing his guitar mm -hmm. and singing cover songs. It's just an old guy, but he has covers a lot of things. And then he, just, and there's a lot of people watching these videos and liking it and uh, it's 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 uh, strange but i kind of find that there is some beauty in that <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good maybe we should uh, invite some guests uh to speak about this because i th i i agree it's a really intriguing Uh, question and not to solve it in any way but just to dance around inside that question of okay what's going on there and what what could that say about um, I uh, yeah about I think really the, the the this sphere works differently and also changes it works differently in the sense that um, 
also a communication starts when there is more it is like it somehow if you perform live in a then it does not really matter if it's one spectator or 20 or 30 it's maybe better than mm. 300 maybe better 10 yeah. or 20 or 30 or 50 than 300 or 1000 in some ways no but in the internet it somehow starts it works differently it it's it, it works differently and you it is <laughs> you need m there is a different kind of communication because it if there's not a lot of if there's 20 people then there is no communication because nobody it starts with more and um yeah and it's uh, yeah <laughs> and that's also <laughs> you're very right that's when also something starts to happen between those people watching no? that, that yes. they become the community uh, some body of this yeah yeah they, they become the body of this creature but there is i think one one thing that is a bit bothering about that is that these algorithms have so much uh, say in in what becomes the body or what which things gain uh, the large crowds and also the pluggers you know, if it if it gets spread by uh, certain channels, then and then things uh, have a better chance. Yeah, like there's this snowball effect. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, you can you can also to you can buy likes. I know you can uh, on Instagram. Yeah. You can you can yeah. from I don't know Russian yeah. or I don't know from where you can <laughs> buy ten thousand likes. It costs and. It's a business. It's uh, also. It's also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This uh, we are okay. Some uh, maybe some. Some. Um, what uh, what did I write again? I I wrote some more. Did do you know this? FOMA fear of missing out. FOMA. Just uh, I I I'm I no never heard of it. No. No. It's what you had when you were looking at all this U.S. U.S. television and thing, uh, fear of missing out. Uh, there is a fear of missing out. FOMO, FOMO. It's a kind of a yeah, word yeah. for it. I'm not sure I had that actually. <laughs> I I know. I that. think fear I had more the teleno the telenovela addiction <laughs> of getting cheap thrills. <laughs> what did I have? Yeah, we didn't talk about the hammer and the dance, about the metaphors of the crisis. Ah, uh, but this we talked about uh, one year ago. Yeah, yeah. I remember. This, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we are going to end, Mariah. <laughs> We're going to end now. I know. <laughs> Just <laughs> want to find some. So, I wanted to look a little bit into the future of the podcast, about the next, next future. For the podcast, we will have, uh, the next time we will have uh, guests. The nec Both next times we will have guests. Next uh, Monday is in two weeks. Uh, yeah. The next Monday in two weeks is in two weeks, <laughs> which is the uh, oh, well done. <laughs> is, it the is it the five of April? I don't know. It's uh, okay. In two weeks, we will meet Yasha and Zina from uh, the German network theater network Cheers for Fears. It's called Cheers for <laughs> Fears, and uh, they are a students' network. Mm -hmm. theater net a uh, network of of performance students in this region where I'm living here North Rhine Westphalia and very active since uh, since some years I don't know exactly and uh, we will speak about uh, yes this notion of networks and of course about everything what we uh, then we will go into all this relation thing no and um uh, <laughs> is it actually what do I, we we should bring some questions now what is a network or is it important to have a network is it sometimes tired to have a network always network always net always <laughs> uh, more meetings and more network and <laughs> but it's good yeah so we will have them in two weeks and then in yeah why would a network have meetings yeah, that's true. Why would the network have that's true. Why? to consolidate itself? A network needs meetings. Tickle it. I think huh? a network a network needs meetings. 
And then, okay, let's think about that and okay. come back to it. Does the network need me? Okay. <laughs> and then again, in four weeks, we will uh, revisit, we will, um, or he will, we will um, welcome um, Andre again, Andre Allen from, from Futo 3, Future 3, you remember? Yes. And together with his colleague Stefan, Stefan Kraft, so he will, they will also be two guys <laughs> and um, we will speak because Futo 3 we spoke with Andre the last time it was around May I think and it was more or less the beginning which we talked about now the beginning of our can we do theater in the in the online blah 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 and all of this and they really experimented a lot for instance they made a performance which consisted of a chat bot so it was you could you can now I could call this chat bot and chat with him and it's some kind of performance just for me oh, with with this wonderful. bot. And so they How do I call the bot? It's in German, so you oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we will talk about that. We will talk about this nice. this, this peri pandemic um, theater phenomenon. Yeah? Great. And I don't know if we stay in one hour. We managed today, we managed fantastically <laughs> to stay. To have We're not so good at speaking. <laughs> but we keep trying. That's all that counts. But, yeah. You, you're tired now, no? Aren't you? You're, are I you tired? am. I am tired. <laughs> I have a bath waiting for <laughs> me. <laughs> I would like to get into it. <laughs> you just... Uh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I want to. I want to go on speaking about important things, but no, she just wants her <laughs> no, bath. No, sorry. <laughs> Some things have to <laughs> take precedence. I will leave you with uh, the great Michael Spicer. If you don't know him, I will put the link somewhere in the show great. notes, and uh, you need to check out everything from him. All right. And um, see you next time. Yeah? See you next <laughs> in time. In two weeks. In two weeks live and uh, then in everywhere where you get your podcasts and send us comments uh, if you want. And now enjoy Michael Spicer with I Hear You. It's always uh, a current theme. It's always, you can always play it and it always fits. Listen, it's the white man who doesn't have a platform for free speech anymore. It's the white man whose voice isn't being heard. I say as much in my blog and on my TV show and in my uh, newspaper column and on my radio show and in my book. I say all this and people say to me, I hear you. My voice isn't being heard either. And I go, I hear you. I hear that your voice isn't being heard. And they go, I hear you. I hear that you hear me about my voice not being heard. And I go, I hear you about you hearing me hearing you not bit 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 bit